Hi everybody, this is Gat Saad. Uh, as many of you know, I'm currently trying to wrap up my forthcoming book and I was recently working on a section where I discuss uh, the lack of intellectual and political diversity uh, among the uh, academic uh, disciplines. Uh, in, on this channel, I've covered several studies that have looked at uh, the distribution of uh, professors in American universities who either uh, registered as Democrats versus uh, Republicans. And of course, the results are unbelievably lopsided. Uh, I'll put uh, a link to at least one of my previous uh, Sad Truth clips wherein I've covered some of these studies, but there are several on this channel. But for today, what I wanted to do is discuss another study that I'll be, uh, that I am covering in the book. Let me just go through it. This is Political Diversity in Social and Personality Psychology. This is the title of the paper. It's by Yoel Inbar and Joris Lammers. It's uh, published in uh, Perspectives on Psychological Science in 2002. So what they wanted to basically do is look at, uh, you know, how do professors or, or social and personality psychologists, how do they, uh, where do they fit on a... Uh, liberal versus conservative continuum. But what is interesting about this paper is they wanted to gauge the researchers, that is, whether social and personality psychologists would be willing to discriminate in a biased manner against uh, colleagues uh, on in various ways when judging, when evaluating their papers, evaluating their grant applications, deciding whether to invite them to a symposium or not, and when making actual hiring decisions. So to those who say, oh, but it's normal that professors are liberal, it's because smart people are liberal and professors are liberal, therefore, of course, professors are going to be liberal, which is, of course, is a laughable position. They are very smart conservative uh, people and they are very smart liberal people. And of course, the same applies for dumb people. So this is not about a self-selection bias as some idiots uh, proclaim. It very much has to do with the fact that uh, you create a priesthood, an echo chamber priesthood of folks who are like you politically, and you penalize those who are not. So this paper exactly set out to test this. And let me read you some of the findings. So here we go. Uh, just bear with me, just so I can get to the actual. This is covered in table two of the paper in question. So this is on a scale of one to seven you know, how much would you be willing to discriminate from one, not at all, to seven, very much. Number four is the midpoint of that scale. Uh, when reviewing papers, reviewing grant applications, deciding whether to invite someone for a symposium and hiring decisions. So now these are just the scores of people. These are the percentages of people who answered who scored equal or higher than four, where four, remember, is the midpoint of the scale. So you're, 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 admitting, you're admitting to... Uh, you know, engaging in bias and discrimination against those that you perceive uh, to not share your political outlook, in this case, if they are conservative. Well, for paper uh, review, 18.6%, me meaning roughly one out of five, had a score of greater than or equal to four. So 20% of professors in those fields openly are admitting that they would discriminate in terms of how they would judge your paper. Bruh. What liberal bias? When it comes to grant review, 23.8% gave a score of four or higher. So one-fourth of people uh, are definitely admitting to discriminating against you when it comes to grants. When it comes to symposium invitations, 14% scored four or higher. And when it came to hiring decisions, hence this is how you build echo chambers, 37.5% gave a score of four or higher. And then they also ask people, do you think that your colleagues would engage in such behavior? So they first ask them whether they would engage in this behavior and what, whether their colleagues would. And here are the scores for the four metrics. For paper review, they, they, they said that 34.2% would, meaning that they would score a four or higher. So so people thought that more than one third of their colleagues would discriminate against 
conservative professors when they're reviewing their papers. When it came to grant reviews, 36.9%. When it came to symposium invitation, 29.6%. And when it came to hiring decisions, they thought that 44.1% of people would discriminate against hiring a conservative professor. And again, here we're putting the score as four or higher. Now, of course, note that th these numbers are an understatement of the true numbers, because if anything, we know from impression management that people are not going to be, are not going to be willing to tell you that they'd be willing to openly discriminate. So if they're giving you these numbers, if they're admitting to these with these kinds of figures, you can bet that the actual number is much higher. This is the reality that we live in, in academia. I could personally tell you, although I'm hardly someone who is conservative, because of some of the positions I take, people wrongly presume that I have posters of Trump in my uh, bedroom that I use as a technique for foreplay. I, I don't love Trump. I simply try to critique people's way of, uh, ways of thinking. Uh, and so just because of the positions that I take, some people think that I am you know, a Jewish neo-Nazi and an alt-right and a Trump supporter, I'm Canadian. And so people wrongly presume that I'm somehow conservative. You couldn't be more socially liberal than I am. Uh, and I can promise you, I can assure you that I have been punished on many, many occasions when it came to hiring decisions by other universities, when it has come to gr uh, grant applications, when it's come to chaired professorship applications, all sorts of situations, I know for a fact that I was discriminated against. So to those who think that, uh, oh, come on, uh, Dr. Saad, aren't you exaggerating the liberal bias? Uh, no, I'm understating how outlandishly bad the environment is on university campuses. Healthy societies are those that allow for a fair competition of ideas. All ideas come in, compete, and then let the best ones win out. Universities are supposed to epitomize that ethos, and yet we are very far from it. Hope you're all having a great uh, end of the week. Wish you all a good weekend. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Don't forget to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if uh, you like what I do, consider supporting me on Patreon, Subscribestar, uh, and or PayPal. Cheers, everybody.